place and time has been disseminated as required under the Open Public Meetings Act, Chapter 231, PL 1975. In addition to publishing of the annual meeting schedule, electronic notice was provided on December 11, 2020 to the local source, the Star-Ledger, noting that the meeting would be conducted through the Ring Central program and containing information on how to assess the meeting. The same information was posted on the city's website, Linden TV, the bulletin board, and the front door of City Hall. Copies of the agenda, finance report, and personnel reports are also posted on the city's website and lived in TV for the public. This meeting is now called to order. Mr. Clerk, can you please conduct a prayer and flag salute? God of the universe, look down with favor upon these here assembled and bestow thy guidance upon the members of the governing body and their deliberations. This we ask in thy name. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Members of the public who may be attending or are on mute until the public hearing on ordinances or the public comment portion of the meeting. If you wish to be recognized, please use the raised hand icon in the program to identify yourself. You will then give your name and address as at any council meeting. Failure to do so will result in your being muted and not recognized further. If you are registered more than once, you will only be recognized to speak one time under your first registration as with any council meeting. When public comment is open, the ability to register will be closed. Mr. Clerk, can you please call the roll? Mrs. Orman. Here. Javik. Here. Caldwell. Here. Mohammed. Present. Cosby. I'm here. Roman. Present. Strano. Here. Blaine. Excused. Medina. Here. Hickey. Here. Mrs. Yamakaitis. Here. Okay, can we have approval of the minutes of the November 10, 2020 regular meeting? Yes, Council President. Make a request for the approval of regular uh, meeting minutes for November 10, 2020, and request a second. Second. Mrs. Orman. Yes. Javik. Yes. Caldwell. Yes. Muhammad. Yes. Cosby. Yes. Roman. Yes. Strano. Yes. Medina. Yes. Hickey. Yes. Mrs. Yamakaitis. Yes. Okay, we're moving on to ordinances on hearing. Ordinance uh, 6456 had, had previously been removed. So we have ordinance 6457 we're starting with. An ordinance to amend and supplement chapter seven, traffic of an ordinance entitled, an ordinance adopting and enacting the revised general ordinances of the city of Linden 1999, passed November 23rd, 1999, and approved November 24th, 1999 and as amended and supplemented, be it ordained by the Council of the City of Linden, Section 1, that Chapter 7, Traffic, shall be in the same as hereby amended as follows. 7-33, Handicap Parking regula Regulations. 7-33, 1A, Handicap Parking on Street. Add 556 East Elm Street, one space. 42 West 12th Street, one space. Delete 25 Cedar Avenue, one space. Okay, has the ordinance been properly published and posted? Yes, ma'am. Has any written communication been received? No, ma'am. Is there anyone who wishes to be heard on this ordinance? Please use your raised hand icon. Okay, seeing none, can we have a motion, please? Council President, I'd like to make a motion to close the hearing on ordinance 6457, adopted into policy, and ask for a second, please. Second. Mrs. Orman? Yes. Javik? Yes. 
Caldwell? Yes. Mohammed? Yes. Cosby? Yes. Roman? Yes. Strano? Yes. Medina? Yes. Icky? Yes. Mrs. Yamakaitis? Yes. Ordinance 6458. An ordinance to amend an ordinance entitled an ordinance establishing a schedule of title, salary ranges, and regulations for maintaining the classification and salary standardization plan of all employees of the city of Linden passed August 15, 1995, and approved August 16, 1995, adding schedule 4008. Okay, has the ordinance been properly published and posted? Yes, ma'am. Has any written communication been received? No, ma'am. Is there anyone who wishes to be heard on this ordinance? Okay. Well, Councilman, we're gonna have a, a motion in the second first before comments from members of the council. Okay, seeing none from the attendees, can we have a motion please? Council President, I'd like to move that ordinance number 6458, uh, the um, have the the uh, hearing closed for that ordinance and the hearing adopted. I mean the ordinance adopted and I request a second. Second. Okay. Discussion. Councilman Roman. Thank you, Council President. Uh, I guess this would be a question for Al. What are we doing here? What is uh, what are we adding? What are we changing? What's the change? Obviously, we're in a we had an hour long conversation about it. So this is establishing the position of Mason Senior Carpenter Tier 2 at a minimum of $25.50 an hour and a maximum of $35.50 an hour and Senior Traffic Maintenance Worker Tier 2 at a minimum of $20 per hour and a maximum of $32.50 an hour. And these are positions that are new edits? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Joe. Okay, can we have a roll call, please? Mrs. Ormond? Yes. Javik? Yes. Caldwell? Yes. Mohammed? Yes. Cosby? Ms. Cosby? Abstain. Roman. Yes. Strano. Yes. Medina. Yes. Hickey. Yes. Mrs. Yamakaitis. Yes. Okay, we're going to move on to the consent agenda items. All items listed with asterisks are considered to be routine by the city council and will be enacted with one motion. There will be no separate discussion on these items unless a council member so requests. Okay, we have consent agenda items number one through four. Any other council members have any? Okay, can we have a motion, please? We have a motion on the consent agenda items. Mike. Yes, uh, Council President, I move for approval of the consent agenda. I request a second. Second. Mrs. Ormond? Yes. Javik? Yes. Caldwell? Yes. Mohammed? Yes. Cosby? Yes. Roman? Uh, yes. Strano? Yes. Medina? Yes. Vicky? Yes. Mrs. Yamakaitis? Yes. Okay, we're going to move on to uh, reports from um, committee reports from members of the governing body. Okay, I'm going to start with Councilwoman Ormond. Thank you, Council President. Okay, I'm going to start with the finance report. Approval is requested for the following finance actions. The payment of bills totaling 3,859,000, 3,859,000, 3,859,000, 3,859,000, 3,859,000, 3,859,000, 3,859,000, 3,859,000, 3,859,000, 3,859,000, 3,859,000, 3,859,000, 3,859,000,
$859,457.22. Bills have been signed by the mayor, council president, and finance chairwoman, and a detailed check register and vouchers are on file in the clerk's office. We are in receipt of the investments made by the city treasurer for the month of November at the rate of 0.20%. I move, uh, move for approval and ask for a second, please. Second. Mrs. Orman? Yes. Javik? Yes. Caldwell? Yes. Mohammed? Yes. Cosby? No. Roman? Yes. Strano? Yes. Medina? Yes. Icky? Yes. Mrs. Yamakaitis? Yes. Okay, Councilwoman. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I'm trying to pull up now my um, my other report. I'll, I'll go back to my, I'll go back to my parking report. But I just want to just mention um, while I'm uh, looking for that parking report, meters will be covered um, with plastic bags for the holiday from December 18th through January 4th, 2021. That is just our way of wishing everyone a happy holiday. Now I'm going to just talk a little bit about my um, my ward report and council president, if I can beg your indulgence, uh, maybe to come back to me at the end for my trip, my um, parking report. Okay, the Linden Cultural and Heritage Committee is having their annual house decorating contest for the holidays. Every house is eligible to win. Unlike last year, we asked people to um, register. We will be driving around our own um, wards and we will be picking out the three most outstanding, most colorful, unique, classic houses. Um, and we'll be submitting them to the Heritage and Cultural Committee for a panel of judges to pick the um, best or the most favorite. The prizes are going to be gift certificates from some of our local small businesses. Keeping in mind that COVID is such a, um, a, a hot spot with us, we're going to do everything that we can to make sure that our small businesses in our town stay in business. So all of the prizes will be from one of the local establishments that we have in the city of Linden. Also, just a reminder that the snowstorm is coming. There are streets that are designated no parking when the road is snow covered. One of them in my ward in particular is DeWitt Street. If you park, I'm not going to say you may get towed. You will get towed. Any other street that is designated do not park during while the street is snow covered. It's for safety and for emergency reasons. You will get towed. Um, we are also um, requesting that everyone follow the ordinance about shoveling your sidewalks. After the snow falls, you have a certain amount of time, I believe it is until 6 a.m. or six hours after the snow falls to remove the snow from your walkway for the safety of people that are passing. That is also uh, something that you can be issued a summons if you do not adhere to. This goes for businesses as well as residential. Bulk trash pickup. We're asking that everyone please, please do not drag your trash out to the <coughs> curb a week before your scheduled bulk pickup. A couple of days is acceptable, but definitely not a week. We want to keep in mind that we would like to keep our community beautiful. And if you have trash that's sitting out on your side of the, of the curb for over a week, that does not personify beautification of our city. And I also would just like to wish everyone a very, very Merry Christmas and a very happy Hanukkah and a very happy Kwanzaa. Um, COVID is just putting a totally different spin on our holidays this year. But just remember that keeping safe and staying healthy for this season hopefully will mean many more seasons that we can enjoy our family and our friends. Mm -hmm. And um, once again, Council President, um, I beg your indulgence to come back to me after the um, 10th Ward Council report so I can report on our parking um, report. Okay, thank you, Councilwoman. Thank you. Okay, Councilman Javik, second Ward. Yes, Council President. Uh, as chairman of the uh, fire committee, the Fire Prevention Bureau collected the following monies during the month of November 2020, a total of $5,180.77. Regarding the Linden Fire Department ambulance billing, 
the amount of $41,108.41 for November 2020 has been added to the total deposits for 2020, totaling $644,822.41. Good evening. Uh, well, 2020 will shortly be coming to a close. Uh, with all that has happened, all the canceled events and changes that have taken place, this year will become just a memory. And now the spirit of the holiday season is upon us. This year was truly about the residents of Linden, helping each other to get through our different, difficult times. With all that said, more people have been at home this season, and it shows by the amount of decorated homes in the second ward. I will be submitting three homes to enter into the Linden Cultural and Heritage Committee's House Decorating Contest. Their committee will judge the homes and a gift card goes to the winner. I just wanna say good luck to all. Santa, he's gonna be flying in to visit our Uptown Linden SID office on Wood Avenue, directly across from the post office on December 18th and 19th, Friday and Saturday, five to 8 p.m. Please stop by with your children and uh, come and see him. With the uh, anticipated winter storm coming, which is good for Santa Claus, but not so good for us. Please help us out by getting the uh, cars off the street. This will, this way all our plows uh, can go through there and uh, get it nice and cleaned up. In the second ward, we have uh, water line work still being done and it's continuing. So there's gonna be a lot more detours yet. As a uh, safety tip, many residents are getting items stolen from their cars because they are simply forgetting to lock it up. The days of leaving your cars and house unlocked is way in the past. On another note, our finance department and committee have been working extremely hard to get the taxpayer another 0% increase on the taxes. Our gold is there, but with the COVID situation, it's gonna be difficult this year. One last reminder, as I did last month also, the Board of Health flu shot program is still available. If you would like a flu shot, call 908-474-8409. Uh, again, please be safe, be healthy, be responsible. And I can be reached at 908-494-4608 or email me at bjavik at linden-newjersey.org. I wish you all a Merry Christmas and a Happy Holiday. Council President, end of report. Thank you, Councilman Javik. Okay, Councilwoman Caldwell, third award. Thank you, Council President. Um, greetings and salutations to my third ward neighbors. Um, I am going to first uh, give you the update from code and construction as I am the chair. The code and construction department has issued 174 permits, processed 23 certificates and generated $137,579 in fees for the month of November 2020. Um, as far as the IT department, um, we're currently uh, navigating navigating in target weather this year. And is somebody's speaker on? This, oh, oh my God. Um, the IT accomplishments for um, currently, we currently revised the city white uh, website to make it easier to navigate. We received some feedback. So we took a look at it and um, revised it and it's still a work in progress and it's ongoing. Um, we decided that the city employees need to work from home because of the COVID ca cases. It's been confirmed that 46 employees will receive a laptop in the next couple of weeks so they can work from home and keep moving this city forward. Um, several months ago, we had Teleapp do a evaluation of the city, the city infrastructure. And during that time, they did a deep dive um, in the in inventory for the city, the computers. Um, they sent a survey out to the team members um, to include their input, 57% of the team members would be willing to work from home if given the opportunity. Um, there has been connectivity issues with their computers. The internet is not sufficient 
there is a lack of technology training. So TeleApp has made some recommendations to go to file digitalization where documents are stored on the cloud with conventional folder structure, which would replace, you know, which would protect irreplaceable documents and also enable easy file retrieval. Um, they also suggested that we upgrade some of our software locally on the desktops to the cloud. Um, the platform that they recommended was um, to migrate to Google Cloud for government G Suite. Um, they also did research to indicate that the cloud solution, um, other cloud providers, including Microsoft, Amazon, and Oracle were not best suited for the city of Linden. In 2020, our goal is to move the IT department forward with Google G Suite. Um, I wanna let you know that my community meetings will be posted on the website for 2021 before the end of the year. My contact information is M Caldwell, M-C-A-L-D-W-E-L-L -L at Linden dash New Jersey dot org. My number is 908-274-1307. Um, I want to thank the transportation and parking department, Tyrone Gibbons, for always helping out when I needed him for my uh, constituents. I want to thank Public Works, David Martinez, Jerry Bishop. I want to thank the police department, for uh, stepping up patrols in Fort Ford. You know, I've, I've, I don't live in Fort Ford, but my family's from Fort Ford and they've seen more patrolling and I wanna thank you for that. Um, and I wanna tell all my constituents and I also wanna thank the uh, fire department for doing a great job as well. And I wanna um, remind my constituents, please wear a mask, social distance, wash your hands, be safe. Um, numbers are rising with COVID. I work for a hospital and it's, it's, you know, they have a vaccine now, but the healthcare workers will be the first ones to basically get, you know, the vaccine. So just be patient. And um, I want to wish everyone a happy holiday, uh, happy Kwanzaa, Merry Christmas, happy Kwanzaa. And I also want to say my condolences to the Woody family for the loss of Beulah Woody, um, the Murphy family for the loss of Cynthia Murphy, and Miss Pat Frankel, um, the loss of her as well. Uh, and also garbage is on Friday instead of Thursday. And that's the end of my report. Thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman Caldwell. Okay, uh, Councilman Muhammad. Thank you, Council President, and good evening. Uh, to all. I too like to offer my sympathy to Ms. Beulah Woody of the G.G. Woody Funeral Home. Her family lives here in the fourth ward. And I too want to put a great emphasis and appreciation on our police department has done a wonderful job in the fourth ward. And I have been out observing them throughout the summer and actually talking to many of the young people who need encouragement and support to live a healthy life and to be a competitor in America. And on the third Saturday in, in the month of January, the beginning of the month, we're going to start out, have a community meeting, we hope, and we've been hosted by the Holy Mountain Church at 800 Roselle Street. The meeting is tentatively scheduled for 1 o'clock. We'll be discussing police and other matters. Let me also say what the sentiment I've gotten of my resident. One of them asked me the question, are they going to raise the taxes? And his comment was, you never know. I said, no, we're not. Absolutely not. There will not be a return to the garbage tax. That will, and that's why I'm supporting the council and the mayor and all of you to work on the budget committee and imploring you to get very sharp pencils. I've just bought a box of ink pens if you need any. Lord, make sure that we keep the taxes down. I'm a, re I'm a resident. I pay taxes in this town. Quite hefty taxes. Some people in town probably don't pay taxes. And I don't know. I don't knock people who rent apartments. That's a good thing. 
I, I certainly have tenants, but I can tell you it's a bad thing to think about raising taxes of any proportion. I know it's normal in America to raise taxes, but over oh, my dead body, will I support any effort to raise taxes? I'm for lowering taxes, keeping the city livable, and keep and continue to improve the quality of life in this great city. Well, uh, and I want to appreciate the great residents of the Fourth Ward who have given me a mandate, overwhelming 83% of the vote. Uh, you know, you can always get somebody that don't like you, so that's part of that's part of part for the court. Uh, but I appreciate those people who gave me an overwhelming support. I heard you loud and clear. Also, you I heard you loud and clear about one of the Newsom houses. We're working with the appropriate department, the health department, the code department, and the police department. And we will be getting cooperation. We're going to make the Fort Ward a very, very livable place. I've been here 17 years, so I mean, it, it's not like it's foreign to me. Basically, I walk the streets of the ward every day, and I can see the joy on the face of the people as I walk the ward. Uh, I want to wish everybody extraordinarily happy and safe holiday. Let's also celebrate this country coming back to normalcy. Uh, wear your mask. Uh, there are no magic bullets. We thank God that there is a vaccine. There isn't right now a cure for treatment. So we should wear masks. We shouldn't lis listen to people who don't follow science. Let's continue to follow science. Let's continue to make London a great city. Let's continue to make America a great country. And let's applaud all the good work. But I just especially have to give a shout out to a person that I just lean on on a daily basis for concerns and public works in other departments. That is the Honorable Jerry Bush Bishop. You know, I'm, I'm quick to criticize those who don't do right. But when you have good people doing a great job, people like Jerry Bishop, Mayor Armstead, we just have to appreciate them, and we will continue to appreciate them. And I'm very happy to serve the city of Linden and to serve with people as you honorable council persons who are committed to keeping a safe and fiscally responsible city that is no tax increase, no garbage tax, no uh, thought of increasing tax. Let's keep Linda safe. Let's keep Linda prudent. God bless you, and God bless America. That concludes my report, Council President. Thank you, Councilman Muhammad. Councilwoman Cosby? You got to unmute? OK. Thank you. So I'm going to read my report. Good evening. I'm, I am making a motion requesting the installation of a light at 1826 Mildred Avenue. The poll number is 02542. And I'm requesting a second. Or may I have a second? Second. Thank you. I do not have a report from the Rent and Leveling Board. They are having a special meeting tomorrow night, and I have uh, asked for a report from the secretary as I won't be able to. Councilwoman? Sorry? Do we have a motion on that light? Again? Yeah. Um, Mr. Medina made a second. It was, mm -hmm. I'm going to make a motion requesting request an installation of the light at 1826 Mildred Avenue. Poll number 02542. 02542? Yes, the deputy clerk has this. I sent three emails, but apparently it was overlooked. Not by her, because she's awesome. <laughs> okay. Okay. Mrs. Ormond? Yes. Javik? Yes. Caldwell? Yes. Mohammed? Yes. Cosby? Yes. Roman? Yes. Strano? Yes. Blaine? I'm sorry. Medina? Yes. Hickey? Yes. Mrs. Yamakaitis? Yes. Okay, go Thank ahead. You. Okay. I do not have a report from the Rent Leveling Board. They are having a special meeting tomorrow night, and I have asked for a report from the secretary as I will not be able to attend due to a conflict. 
For information on attending the meeting, please contact the city clerk, sorry, Joe, to get instructions on how to join the meeting. I would like to acknowledge my neighbor, Jan Sudnick, as the fifth ward 2020 Good Neighbor of the Year and thank her for her diligence in looking out for the ward and ensuring that we maintain optimum quality of life. I started to annually recognize residents here in the fifth ward many years ago because I appreciate that they care as much as I do. When I cannot be everywhere all at once, it's because of my good neighbors that I have been able to be successful. Thank you, Jan, you are appreciated. I wanted to remind everyone that tomorrow is our last regularly scheduled community meeting. Last month, I announced the meeting for the 17th. However, the meeting is actually tomorrow on the 16th at 6.30 p.m. I will send out a link to the meeting. It will be live on YouTube and on my council Facebook page. Our focus will be legal marijuana and what it means to us. The council passed a zoning ordinance in years past, which prohibited all retail marijuana establishments. The new legislation that is in Trenton nullifies that. So we here in Linden need to make decisions as to what we are going to do. All while keeping in mind that we as a municipality could generate revenue since this is going to be the new normal. Tune in and learn more. My guests will be Senator Scatari, who was the champion of the legalization of marijuana, the mayor, Mayor Armstead, and the Linden Police Chief, Chief Hart. As you can see on St. George's Avenue, the state is doing a lot of improvements to the curbs and safety lights. I hesitate to announce that the push to stop light is under construction as we have not had a solid confirmation, but I will say with confidence that the light has been approved and will be included in the improvements. Additionally, the bus shelter that I worked so hard to get placed at 1140 East St. George's Avenue was supposed to be replaced by now by the developer, but it has not. I have heard from some commuters and I'm working to see what the delay is all about. This shelter was removed due to construction and now that construction is completed in this area and I'm working to get this shelter put back. Thank you for your patience. Please pay attention to the emergency uh, road signs that prohibit parking on certain streets in our ward. There's no parking on roads when snow covered and the police will tow your car. Chandler Avenue, Park Avenue, Hagel Avenue, East Baltimore Avenue, and Dill Avenue. This is a warning. As far as I know, alternate street side parking has not been suspended, so please be guided accordingly. If you need to contact me, please call or text 908-718-7933 or email rcosby at linden-nj.org. I, like, I want to wish you all a happy holiday season and remind you all that coronavirus is real. Our little city has had upwards of 300 new positive cases since December. Be careful. Enjoy your holidays. That concludes my report. Thank you, Councilwoman. Councilman Roman. Thank you, Council President. Um, good evening, everyone. Just wanted to start off by saying that I recently uh, went over to Del Air Nursing Home, uh, Aristocare at Del Air uh, on West Simpson Avenue. Everyone in the Six Wards aware and, and beyond. Uh, we dropped off uh, 500 can 95s. Their staff members, part of my uh, buzzing and my uh, last uh, May, I buzzed head on Facebook Live and raised over six thousand uh, dollars for nurses and healthcare workers in the area. Uh, and I'm getting ready to announce uh, more on what will become of that. I'm excited about it. I'll have more information for you guys next month. Aristocare, as you know, was hit hard during the first wave of the coronavirus. Uh, it's clear in the second wave that uh, their amazing staff is working very hard to continue uh, help the most vulnerable in this community. I really want to thank the owner, Robert, and the staff there for welcoming me inviting me out there and keeping me abreast of uh, what's going on there and allowing me to uh, lend a hand when they need it. You know, coronavirus, uh, obviously we were and are in the middle of the second wave of it, uh, being recovered for nearly two months now. I've been at the walk-up uh, testing centers in Union County. Uh, every Tuesday and Thursday, they're uh, stationed all over the county and they move. Uh, we were in Rawway, and this afternoon we were in Fanwood. I spent all day out there. 
Uh, it's honestly rather amazing uh, what the county has been able to uh, put together and accomplish here. Uh, our number one in testing uh, in this state. We were the first ones to put together a testing site and it's just been overwhelmingly beneficial to the residents. So just today we did thousands of people. Uh, results are normally returned within one day. And again, I can't say enough about the workers that are out there working in the cold. People can find appointments in Union County. Uh, these walk-ups, you don't need one. So just go to ucnj.org slash COVID-19. Information on it there. Again, that's ucnj.org slash COVID-19. That's the county website. Saturday, the county is going to continue to do their food, food distributions. This one's a Christmas one. Uh, it's on December 19th, Saturday. It'll be at 9 a.m. at Kane University. Save money or you're hungry. It doesn't matter. Just come get the food. Let the volunteers put it in your trunk and uh, save some money on a groceries this week and spend that money on something else. Spend it on more gifts for your kids, uh, for your family, uh, or, just, or just save some money. Um, that's this Saturday, 9 a.m. at Kane University. I want to move on to the main servicing that was happening last week on Clinton and East Morris. Uh, they got it done very quickly. Uh, the city, and I want to thank Joe Krovac for being all over them on this. The city asked them to get it done before uh, there was something going on at the school there, and they did. I uh, want to let you know, Union, Liberty, East 10th, Clinton, uh, they will all be half paved where need be. Clinton and East Morris, since they were paved last year, they will re be repaving and restriping it completely back to new. Uh, so keep that in mind. If anyone has any issues with the contractors, I'm in contact with them, our engineering uh, at all times, just, just call me. With that, I just want to um, talk about the winter storm real quick. Obviously coming, it's gonna be here tomorrow night. Uh, right now we're looking like we're in the 10 to 12 to 14 inch range. Like it's tapering off just a little bit. This the, the forecast is getting a little lessened uh, this evening, but firmly in the 12 to 14 inch range. Uh, Burnsy Streets in the Sixth Ward are Linden Avenue, South Avenue, Clinton Street. Uh, you are not to park on these streets during the storm at all. We are emergency streets for emergency vehicles. Uh, I'm as serious. Uh, I want to um, Councilwoman Ormond. If you leave your cars on the street, especially Clinton. Uh, the vehicle will be towed. Um, and I will be out in the storm helping anyone who needs it. But if you need me, uh, please call me 908 494 We had two six orders pass this month from coronavirus. Um, I went through it. I know a few others on council went through it. It's not a walk in the park. Protect yourselves, wear a mask, stay safe. Stay safe this holiday, make good decisions. And uh, so have a Merry Christmas and happy holidays to everyone. Thank you, council president. That concludes my report. Thank you, councilman. Councilman Strano. Thank you, Council President. Uh, I'll try to read through this personnel report as quickly as I can, and I may need a little extra time. I hope you'll uh, okay. Um Number one uh, on the personnel report is the police department. I used the permission to finalize five total background checks for police officer recruits and hire up to five pending successful of all pre-employment requirements for the replacements from the requirements. A is the permission to hire June Span and Megan Skrumskis. Her DM public safety telecommunicator is effective December 30th of 2020 at the hourly rate of $22.50, pending successful completion of all pre employment requirements. C is the promotion of Matthew Wisnowski to police sergeant effective December 16, 2020, at the annual salary of $108,000. Is the approval of the assignment of training supervisor at an annual stipend thousand dollars prorating for Kimberly Mados, a uh, public safety telecommunicator, effective December 16th of 2020. Uh, uh, e is accepting the resignation standing of Michael Clawbus, uh, police officer recruit, effective December 4th of 2020. 
with the fire department. A is a promotion of Christopher Rooney to deputy fire chief at the annual salary of $150,960, December 16, 2020, per agreement with the union and the employee and the waiver of salary increase from December 16, 2020 through December 31st of 2020. It's a promotion of Greg Zerzronski, uh, fire captain at the annual salary of $124,000 effective December 16, 2020, agreement with the union and the employee and the waiver of the salary increase from December 16, 2020 through December 31st of 2020. is the promotion of Michael Bradley to fire lieutenant at the annual salary of $108,000 effective December 16, 2020 per the agreement with the union and the employee and the waiver of the salary increase from December 16, 2020 through December 31st of 2020. And the recreation department is a permission to post for a recreation leader to run the special needs bowling program for the department of community services the, uh, one is the division of buildings and grounds and a appointed six as the mason senior carpenter at 3550 an hour effective december 30th 2020 pending the successful completion of all pre-employment requirements I'm in construction code is the appointing of shayla bellinger as a code enforcement trainee at $17.45 an hour, not to exceed 29 hours per week, which is effective December 30th, 2020, and successful completion of all pre-employment requirements. These the promotion to post for one part-time code enforcement trainee at $17.45 an hour, not to exceed 29 hours per week due to retirement. See so the appointing of Anthony Alfano as a fire subcode official at $39.37 an hour, not to exceed 25 hours a week, effective December 20th, 2020, and granting a residency waiver, residency waiver based on the appointment from the statewide civil service list. This is in personnel, A is a carryover of 2020 vacation time, and it's um, the list is attached uh, with the um, city personnel office. B is approval of the requested FMLA NJ FMLA leaves on file in the personnel division. I move for uh, acceptance and request a second. Second. Okay. Mrs. Orman? Yes. Javik? Yes. Caldwell? Yes. Mohammed? Yes. Cosby? No. Roman. Um, Council President, do you mind if I give a quick explanation as to my vote under a minute? No, we're not doing that, sir. Yes. Yes. I vote. I vote yes. Well, Strano. Yes. Medina. Yes. Icky. Yes. Mrs. Yamakaitis. Yes. Councilman, you'll have your opportunity later in the, e uh, in the meeting when it's after public comment, if you'd like to give your uh, explanation then. Okay, go ahead, Councilman Strano. Thank you, Council President. I'll try to make this quick. Uh, I just want the residents that live on West 15th Street to um, be a little bit more patient and understanding. We uh, passed an ordinance making that a one-way street um, there's a, a correction that has to be made to the ordinance and it has to be right re advertised. So it's going to take us a couple months to get that through. Uh, we can advertise it in the uh, timely fashion to get it done this year. So we'll carry into next year. And the correction is due to the direction of the one way there. Um, this past Sunday, uh, car terrorists were at it again. And this is what I'm calling them. Uh, police department was alerted. The problem was taken care of. Uh, this is becoming a uh, problematic. It's similar to uh, a flash mob where we have large uh, rowdy groups of uh, 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 car uh, enthusiasts that uh, rowdy, unlawful, uh, very, like I said, similar to a flash mob where they all congregate in upwards of 100 or more cars at a time. And they seem to be uh, gathering uh, uh, in, in parking lots. And this past Sunday it was actually the target. The target was open. It wasn't even past business hours. Uh, thankfully, uh, my neighbors that uh, uh, live there uh, contacted the police, they contacted me, 
police department took care of it. I think there might have been even been a couple cars towed away or arrest made. Uh, this is going to be ridiculous. These cars are doing burnouts. They're doing donuts. Uh, they've got those loud mufflers, and it's, uh, it's uh, something that I hope is not uh, get worse as the um, comes by with us. I'd like to report on a uh, positive uh, 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 development. Great infrastructure grant uh, that uh, work is being done on South Style Street. The concrete work has commenced. Sidewalks have been poured along uh, South Style Street, uh, a stretch between uh, 17th Street and uh, uh, Memorial Park, which has been orphaned. This is something I've been advocating for all the years that I've been on council. It's finally uh, become a reality. Uh, pedestrians will no longer have to dodge you know, heavy truck traffic and car traffic that uh, use that area. Uh, people that want to walk to the park now have a safe way to get from that area uh, without having to walk out into the street. People that want to walk to the mall can do so without having to be out in the roadway. And, uh, and it works really good. And it looks really good. I tried it out this past Sunday and I have to say uh, it, it's something that uh, I'm really pleased to see finally came to fruition. Um, real quick, I'd like to wish all the residents of Linden a uh, uh, a great uh, holiday, um, a Merry Christmas, uh, Happy Hanukkah, Happy Kwanzaa, uh, any and all other religions that, you know, I may not be familiar with uh, that are celebrated this time of year. And mostly I want to wish everyone and your family to be healthy uh, and safe at, at during this holiday period of this trying time. And that ends my report, Council President. Thank you, Councilman Strato. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, Councilman Blaine, um, is excused this evening. He had a death in his family, but he uh, asked me to make mention to the residents of the 8th Ward about the snow routes in the 8th Ward, their Greer Avenue, Chandler Avenue, East Elizabeth, and East Baltimore. So please get your cars off those snow routes tomorrow. And also um, for the garbage for uh, Thursday, it's going to be postponed till Friday. Okay, so um, thank you. And please also Get your, this is for all the residents in the city, any type of uh, garbage, recycling, paper pickup, get your carts off the um, curbs tomorrow night after the Wednesday one, so they don't get frozen or plowed, okay? So please get your carts back into your yards or driveways tomorrow night. Okay, um, Councilman Medina, you're up. Yes, thank you, Council President. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Thank you. Um, so I have a couple of uh, bullet points here for the ninth quarter. First, I just wanted to express my uh, condolences and prayers for the Gary uh, Rosnick's family, uh, ninth ward resident, uh, retired fireman of over 30 years here in the city of Linden. Unfortunately, passed away and lost his battle uh, from COVID. So uh, again, I just wanted to uh, wish his family uh, uh, a prayer for his family and my condolences again. Great guy. Um, I'm going to address some issues um, that I've been receiving lately. One is every year, and uh, you know, a lot of times it's really uh, more repetitive, but it's always the same issues. And unfortunately, no way to curb um, that issue. You know, with Leaf, DPW does an amazing job, and they have to go by, based on the weather and, and monitoring the, the fall of the leaves and whatnot. And in November, it's just been a very, very warm month. Um, but again, big thank you to DPW. They do an amazing job. Um, unfortunately, we do have few individuals or landscapers that love to go out after we clean our streets and just put everything, just literally make mountains of, of, of leaves again on the street after we clean it. Um, I did uh, submit a mention a few um, names of streets, like for example, Elmwood and Fernwood from Dows to DeWitt are already you have mountains of, uh, of leaves out there. Not sure if DPW was able to get out today. Uh, they're tackling this issue throughout the city. Um, but if, it, if it's out there, um, it might be plowed away <laughs> from the snow. But, uh, you know, we're, we're always out there trying to maintain our roads and, um, and keeping our neighborhood looking clean. So, again, I just ask folks to just be patient with that. Again, it, it is every year. It's the same problem. People just uh, are, are ignorant or, don't, or not just don't have the common courtesy. Um, to try to get things out and, and, and they do these things for some reason, one way or another, I don't know why. Um, also dog waste, I have to say, I don't know, 
I guess I'm appreciative, but before we, we had this problem with dog waste on curb, uh, but now the new trend is you pick up, they pick up the dog waste and they leave it in the, in the baggie and they actually leave the whole the bag in the dog waste on the curb. So I don't know how to take that. <laughs> I've been picking them up, dropping them off in the, in the garbage cans or just taking them home and dropping them off and washing my hands right after. Um, I'm seeing a lot, a lot of that. Now, now again, I'm not seeing the dog waste just straight out on the curb. It is literally in the doggy bag. So someone actually took the energy, picked up the waste, tied up the bag, and just left the bag on the curb. I'm seeing a lot of that around uh, Workmeister's Park, previously known Sunnyside Park. Just everywhere I walk, because I'm also a dog owner and I see these things. It, it's just mind boggling. I, I don't understand why people do these things. Uh, and again, we I guess we just, just try to remind folks to be proud of your community. Um, and when, you t- you know, when, when you're part of your community, these things should not be happening. Um, I'm also going to be uh, working with either the city clerks or engineering. A lot of utility lines are still down, hanging in you know midway between poles, between houses. Um, not sure how to tackle it, but I'm going to reach out to our city clerk, who's full of resources, and also our city engineer's office, which are also full of resources. See if we could tackle some of these addresses and get these utility lines cleaned up because it, it does make the neighborhood look a little bit, um, uh, it just looks like a little bit of an eyesore. So uh, I'm hoping to take care of that hopefully soon. Also, um, just want to mention, we, we did talk about the, the, the street lights that I, that I started. We're hoping to have some sort of response uh, from PACU. I haven't seen a response, but no installation as of yet. I'm not the only council person on this dais that, that is currently waiting for street lights to be installed within their community. More to come on that, I will update the community uh, so we get a solid response from Peace PSPG. I just want to thank the police, fire, DPW, and all city hall employees um, to the residents of Linden. I also want to thank the mayor. He came out with Santa the other day down Orchard Terrace. So that was, uh, that was a little bit of a treat, especially for my son. Um, and it was definitely appreciated by many. So put a smile on some folks' face, um, and um, especially during, these, uh, during this pandemic. Uh, lastly, uh, snow is coming. I'm asking folks to be extra cautious, check on your seniors, uh, your neighbors, our seniors. Uh, please be uh, courteous and do not blow the snow back into the street after we cleaned it. Um, reminder, uh, no parking or snow cover uh, routes. Um, which is the, the Wood Terrace, Orchard Terrace, and Northwood Avenue. Uh, the three rows you cannot park when it's snow covered. Um, just making sure I did not leave a note, so I'm just looking left and right here. Uh, from my notes. Um, no, I think I got everything, but just want to wish everyone a safe and happy holidays. Um, you know, whether you, you're getting together with family or not, uh, it's your, your choice, but definitely just be safe, uh, follow uh, uh, cautions. Uh, this, this, this virus is definitely real. I'm glad to see that there's a vaccine out, rolling out. Uh, and we're hoping, uh, I'm personally hoping to get back to some sort of normalcy in 21. Holidays to everyone. And that um, concludes my report. Thank you, Council President. Thank you, Councilman Medina. Councilwoman Hicks. <laughs> Thank you, Council President. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, as Councilman Medina just stated, uh, little things about uh, the snow coming up. Um, I know it's rough for everybody. Just, I'm just asking, please be considerate to your neighbors. Please be considerate to our, our um, flowers and DPW workers, our first responders. Uh, they work many, many hours um, through these snowstorms and um, they do the best that they can. Councilman Medina and I will be uh, driving around, I think in the next couple of days, hopefully, uh, to pick out some homes in Sunnyside area for uh, the Living Cultural and Heritage Committee. We have some snow shovelers that are willing to shovel uh, during the storm. I have posted their phone numbers on my Facebook page. If anybody would like any snow shovelers, um, my number is 908-4548. I have one young man who has been uh, helping and shoveling, making great money for many of our residents for many, many years. He moved away, 
Well, I'm happy to say that he is help this year. And I'd like to really thank uh, Brendan Welsh for all the work that he's done over the years. Uh, it's really been great. And I have several other uh, older teenagers who also are on my uh, Facebook site, or you can call me. Um, one problem I've been having recently is many calls from residents, uh, homes that are being sold. What's happening is during the nights, during the weekends, um, they are renovating their homes themselves, They're not taking out permits. Um, the complaints I had last weekend, they were residents were truly concerned because there was such heavy drilling, they were afraid they were going to hit a gas pipe. I want to let everyone know, uh, I try to do the right thing, and I want you to know that I will be calling code enforcement on every single home that is reported to me. Uh, rules apply to everyone as far as taking out permits to do proper work and jobs around our neighborhood. There are no exceptions. Uh, tickets will be issued and fines. We have to pay for everyone. Uh, Wood Avenue has looked the best that I've ever seen it in many, many years. I want to thank SIDS and I want to thank um, everybody in the Recreation Department, Public Property Department that did an amazing job on Wood Avenue. It was certainly an uplifting look this year that was well needed. Uh, Gary Rudnicki, retired fireman. My deepest condolences to his wife, Karen, his daughter, Jeanette. Jeanette, I've known Gary since I was about 11 years old, working at Guido's on the corner of Knopf and DeWitt Street. And he'd come in there every single day for his, his tickets and whatever else he, he received there. My sister was so sick. Amazing, amazing man who always took extremely good care of her. Friend to everybody more relationships with him and his family through St. John's and going to Myrtle Beach. It's a great time. And it's unfortunate that you don't speak to somebody in such a long time or see them and then all of a sudden they've passed away from COVID. And you don't even really have the words to say to his family or his fellow co-workers at the fire department or the city of Linden. This has been one of those years learned on what not to take for granted. I had some smart digs that I wanted to make tonight. And you know what? It's not worth it. The little things in life, like my son coming home, instead of having to say goodbye to a husband or a father this weekend. I um, wish everybody a, a beautiful Christmas, beautiful Hanukkah, Kwanzaa. Everybody's in my thoughts and prayers. We're all suffering hard times right now. And let's just hope and wish that 2021 is a much better year. Thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman Hickey. Uh, Councilman Roman, you forgot something in your report. Thank you, Council President. Um, I just wanted to do two quick things. I want to shout out the LSOA, Linden Superior Officers Association, uh, for not only raising the money they did, but also uh, given uh, back the money in, in regards to donating a lot of toys and such. Also want to thank Joe Birch, uh, who's in charge of the LSOA. He's donating a ring camera, a uh, ring doorbell camera to every single uh, ward. So your council people will be giving out a ring camera where it's needed to someone who doesn't have it because of our Linden Superior Officers Association. I want to thank them for that. And also, in regards to the personnel report, I wasn't able to say it before, but uh, Chris Rooney, uh, Greg Ronsky, and uh, Matt Wisniewski, uh, I've, I've known these kids for a long time. They're not really kids anymore. Um, Mike Bertold just got made a fire lieutenant. Uh, he's, a, he's a war hero. I've known Mike Bertold since I was 13 years old running around the borders of Linden, Winfield, and Clark. I can't say this enough. I was so excited to see him come onto the fire department. I think 2014 or 15, uh, he just got promoted to lieutenant. I can't 
can't say enough about this purple heart hero that we have serving on the Linden Fire Department. I want to um, congratulate him personally, his wife, Gabby, and his uh, wife. So thank you, Council President, for allotting me the extra time. Thank you. Councilman Strano, you had something to add to your report? Yes, Council President, thank you for obliging me. Um, I, I also would like to congratulate those gentlemen that are promoted uh, with uh, on the uh, police and fire department. And um, I'm sure they'll do great in their uh, new positions. Uh, uh, Greg Bonsky is one of my neighbors down the street. Uh, known that family since I've lived here, uh, going back to 1987. So yeah, we're real familiar. And we're happy for those uh, young men. Um, I feel to mention, you know, uh, this is another uh, the times, I guess, but we, we lost another former employee um, of our DPW, uh, Joe Pollock, a senior passed away uh, a week and a half ago. A, uh, a neighbor, a friend, said a retired DPW employee, a World War II vet, vet, you know, one of the last of that great generation. Uh, honored on what have you just past the across some blues uh, sub belly on our hometown hero banner um, and uh, he was one of my first acquaintances when I uh, moved to Tremley back in 1987 of mine when uh, he had accidents with his car or, or uh, um, he was also a fellow usher with me at the uh, Holy Family Catholic Church it was one of those guys always had a smile for you. He's missed. Uh, and thank you for letting me uh, mention him. Thank you, Councilman Strano. Councilwoman Ormond, you have your parking report? Uh, yes, thank you, Council President. My parking report, and then one other um, comment that I'd like to make. Um, the monthly financial report from the Division of Transportation and Parking for the month of November 2020 was submitted by Tyrone Givens, the traffic maintenance supervisor. This report includes the collection of on and off street parking, meters, railroads, parking lots, um, parking, railroad parking permits, and merchant parking permits. On the Trenton side, a total of $504 was collected. New York side, $213. Railroad credit card transactions, $9,819.13. Railroad permits, $114. Online railroad permits, $228, and parking meter collections, $9,822.30. And nothing for merchant permits for a grand total of $20,700.43. So that's, that was just my parking permit. And I also just wanted to mention that due to COVID, we are unable to have our holiday craft event for our children. Last year, we did a make and take where the children came, made their craft, had hot chocolate and cookies, and were able to take their craft home. This year, our plans were to do a holiday grab and go where they could do their craft at home, pick it up, maybe say hi to Santa, but because we weren't able to really um, do a safe enclosement for Santa, we have to have a different alternative. Any parent that would like to have their child make a craft for the holiday can contact me via email, lormon at linden-nj.org. We will bring over a craft to your child. It can be a Kwanzaa, a Hanukkah, or a Christmas craft. It will come equipped with the paint, paint brushes, glitter, glue, whatever is necessary to make that craft. The only thing that, we're, that I'm gonna be um, asking the parents to do is after the craft is made, please take a picture and send it over to me so I am able to display it for the world to see. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman Orman. Okay. I would just like to make mention of our retirements for uh, December. We have Al Zatroni, who is a housing inspector, and our police sergeant, Anthony Lordy III, Deputy Fire Chief uh, Larry Kalesa, and Lieutenant uh, Albert Martin in the fire department. On behalf of the council, I'd like to uh, wish them a happy retirement. And I'd like to also congratulate all that were promoted in the fire department 
and um, wish them all the best and police department. Um, again, I just want to make mention about the storm coming. Please pay attention to social media, uh, sign up for Nixel alerts. Uh, please pay attention to all this. We have a big storm coming. So working together, we could all get through the, the public works department, police, fire, they can't do this without the help of the residents. So we need everybody working together. You know, if you have uh, a driveway, please park your car in the driveway so public works can plow your streets. If your neighbors don't and you have room in your driveway, offer space to them. <coughs> you know, this is a time we all need to band together to get the city cleaned up after this storm. I also wanted to give a shout out um, to Captain Wayne Hands and our, our police department for the uh, help fire department also for helping with the Santa sleigh these past two weekends. Uh, as Councilman Medina said, uh, many of the residents really love seeing Santa on the sleigh. Mayor Armstead, I know the weekend prior, uh, he was uh, a frozen little elf on that sleigh, but you know, we made sure people, you know, had got to see Santa. This, these are rough times. Councilman Javik mentioned we're having Santa in the window at our city office this Friday and Saturday evening from 5 to 8 p.m. So get an opportunity, come out, see the beautiful uh, street lights on Wood Avenue. And, you know, we'll have markers out on the sidewalk for social distancing for your children to come up. They can you know, these are unprecedented times. Unfortunately, Santa's gonna have to be behind a window, but I always look back at some of these pictures, you know, some silly pictures with my children, and you can reminisce about the times that you had with like this, and COVID is one, obviously, that the kids won't forget. So come out. There will also be a little mailbox there if your child wants to write a letter to Santa. So they could deposit uh, the letter in the mailbox if they so wish. So. You know, we're trying to make the best of a tough situation here in the city. So again, please come out. All right, Mayor Armstead, I'm up to you now. Yes, sir. I'll have to apologize. I'm experiencing some difficulty with my uh, video, uh, but can everybody hear me? Yes. Fantastic, fantastic. Well, first, let me start off by um, congratulating our police, our, our firemen who our firemen who were promoted uh, Christopher Rooney to Deputy uh, Fire Chief, um, uh, Gregory Ronsky to Fire Captain, and uh, Michael uh, Bertol to, to Fire Lieutenant. Um, these men all work hard and uh, deserving of their promotions, and I'm confident uh, they'll do a great job. Uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention to congratulate uh, to Matthew Wisnowski, to Police Sergeant, I've known, I've known the Wisnowski family all my life. Um, played football with Lou Wisnowski at Pop Warner. So um, the Wisnowskis have been a name that I've known almost all my life since I was about 11 or 12 years old. So congratulations. Certain you'll do a good job. Um, I'm gonna congratulate Sergeant Lordy from the police department on his retirement. Um, like to also congratulate Larry Kalesa on his retirement as well. And certainly last but not least, Al Martin, who we called in high school, Brother Al. And uh, we go back a long ways. Uh, back then, Al used to call us the Bumsteads. We were Armsteads, but he called, he called my brother Jimmy Big Bum, he called me Little Bum, and he called Lisa Baby Bum. So we were all the, we were the Bumsteads back to Al Martin. We were all good friends. Uh, we um, enjoyed each other's company. Uh, we had some great times in high school together. And uh, it's hard to believe the time is moving so fast that people I went to high school with are retiring. And, and he, he could have retired a few years back if he chose to. So, um, but uh, congratulations and, uh, you know, Godspeed and uh, hope you enjoy your retirement. Um, want to send my condolences uh, to uh, Beulah Woody and her family, uh, the Renicki family, the Franco family, the Pollockay family, and I just got received word tonight uh, that Mrs. Carter, a very good friend of mine, has passed. It was not too long ago her husband passed. Uh, and she passed uh, approximately 6.30 this evening. So my condolences to all those families. This is certainly a tough time of year to, to lose someone. But moving right along in no particular order, 
Uh, I have a few things that I have to talk about this evening. Um, number one, the first thing I'll talk about is um, St. George Avenue. Uh, Alex Laspinosa and myself, Alex, who's in charge of Linden Economic Development Corporation, we sat down and we met with the um, city of Roselle. We met with their economic development people. We met with their planner. We met with their attorneys. Uh, and we met with some of the council members uh, to discuss St. George Avenue. I know. And while Roselle is another city, it is uh, it abuts right up to Linden. In fact, the only thing that separates Linden and Roselle is a yellow line. And I just want everybody to know that as we, as we move forward in our efforts to redevelop Linden, um, we have to assist Roselle and give them whatever advice they need and help them along because it just will not be a good thing for us to develop our side and their side not get developed. So um, we're going to be giving Roselle any assistance they need. Um, I, 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 wish we, I wish we could say financial assistance, but we can't do that. But we're going to give them our experience uh, and how we got our, our, our site developed and, and try to work very closely with them to see to it that, they're, that they have a success on their side of the, of the, of the yellow line as well. So um, in the next couple of months, I want everybody to know that we are committed to uh, working with Roselle so, so to see them have a, uh, a successful development on their side of the highway, just as we have. Um, all right, moving right along, I'm sure all of you heard, um, we've had a number of reports about the storm. And yes, tomorrow there's going to be, we're, we're, it is a, a storm is expected. At approximately 2 p.m. tomorrow, we're expected to be hit by a snowstorm. Uh, it's not our first storm, and I'm certain it's not gonna be our last storm. Uh, today I met with the Linden Police Department and Department of Public Works, um, uh, as well as the uh, people representatives, representatives from emergency management uh, to discuss a strategy and how to deal with the impending storm. But here's what you can do as a resident to help. Remember to remove your cars off of the snow emergency streets. And they're as follows. And I know all of you may have mentioned your streets this evening, but uh, I'm gonna mention all of them. Chandler Avenue, Clinton Street, Cranford Avenue, DeWitt Street, DeWitt Terrace, Elizabeth Avenue, Greer Avenue, Knopf Street, Linden Avenue, McCandler Street, Orchard Terrace, Park Avenue, Pleasant Street, Raritan Road, Roselle Street, US 1 Edgar Road, St. George Avenue, Style Street, Trimley Point Road, and Wood Avenue, and both sides of the street for the entire length. And that pretty much covers the whole city. Um, so, um, you know, please. Do not park your car. Those are considered snow emergency routes. And as councilmen, other councils have mentioned this evening, uh, you will be towed. Uh, and, and the police have the authority to tow your vehicle. It is in the interest of public safety that these streets remain clear. Here's what else you can do. If you don't live on an emergency street, park your car in the driveway, maybe in a neighbor's driveway if possible until the storm passes. Try to avoid shoveling snow and, and throwing it back into the road. And last but certainly not least, as mentioned earlier by council members, um, Thursday, garbage pickup in the second, third, fourth, and eighth wards are suspended. Collection uh, of garbage will be moved to Friday. So if, if you can, council members, uh, please uh, I notify your constituents of this, okay? Okay, I'm gonna move on to some other stuff. And, and again, in no particular order. Um, by now I'm certain that uh, many of the residents are aware of a sudden and unexpected increase uh, in the city of uh, violent crimes. Particularly some of it happened in the fourth ward. Uh, and as a result, uh, we're, we're taking action. Um, and on the agenda tonight, there's a bond ordinance for cameras that are gonna go in the fourth ward, uh, AKA uh, Dr. King Park. This is in addition to other steps that have been taken to increase security in our city and restore order. The chief may provide you with some additional information if he feels necessary later on in his reports. But um, I am very happy with the results that I've seen by this police department. And I'm very proud of their efforts to restore order. And, and we will continue to give him the support that he needs. Uh, and we will continue to do whatever is humanly possible to make 
crime, to reduce crime in our town. And, and, and it's, unfortunately, crime is just something that we have to live with. Uh, you're never going to eliminate it, uh, but we're going to do everything humanly possible uh, to reduce it and, 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 and keep our residents safe here. And again, I want to thank the police chief uh, and his uh, task force and that police department for doing what I think is, a, is an outstanding and a stellar job uh, in this city uh, to, to kind of put the cap, to, or the cap to put a lid on the crime as it erupted in this town. And it, I've received several reports from the police with regards to cr wanted criminals who've been uh, apprehended and, and guns that have been taken off the street. So I wanna thank him again. I can't thank him a thousand times for the efforts that he put in. Uh, okay, moving right along. Um, I'd like to thank everyone who helped out with our food distribution. We gave out over 250 turkeys along with fixings to residents in the city of London. Um, Mayor's Youth Commission, um, number of volunteers, and forgive me if I can't remember all the names, but, but um, my, my Office of Constituent Services, uh, we had donations from uh, Super Fresh, ShopRite, um, Philip 66. Uh, it just was a tremendous outpouring of, of um, effort, uh, outpouring of, of, of support that we received from a number of people, uh, and it made this a, a successful operation. And at the same time, we continued with our normal uh, food distribution program. We call it our COVID relief uh, distribution, food distribution activity. Uh, where we would continue. We have over 200 residents there. And additional residents, aside from the 250 that we gave turkeys to, uh, that we uh, were able to successfully give food to. And um, anytime uh, that the county is giving food away, we notify our residents and let them know our, that, 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 that there's food available. So um, I want to thank all those involved in any program that is assisting to uh, help those who are in need of food during this pandemic, okay? So again, I'm not going in any particular order, um, but I'm going to continue to move on, okay? Um, I would like to thank uh, Carl Totoli and Luke Yamakaitis for both volunteering to be Santa Claus over the last two weekends. I'd like to thank the Linden Police Department once again for providing us with an excellent escort. Um, I'd like to thank the fire department for their efforts. I'd like to thank uh, those in public property who repaired the sleigh uh, for us to, 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 so Santa would have a nice uh, sleigh to ride on. Uh, it was, it, you all did an outstanding job. Uh, and this is um, something uh, that I think is necessary during the times that we're faced with. Um, we just couldn't do our regular normal activities. We, we couldn't have our tree lighting ceremony um, that we were accustomed to. Um, so we want to we we try something new, and I'm very thankful for those who have uh, volunteered to help, uh, just so our children in this community could see Santa Claus. And it wasn't just the children; there were a lot of adults who were very happy uh, to see Santa riding through the town. So uh, it just lifted a lot of spirits, and I'm very thankful for all that was done, all those who volunteered. I'd like to thank Mike Bono this evening for being a good listener. And Mike Bono, uh, we talked uh, about doing something different on Wood Avenue. We talked about putting up lights and making Wood Avenue just look different uh, as a result of the pandemic. And that just not just because of the pandemic, because we're Linden. And, and you've got to somehow think of yourself as being a little different, being a little special. And, um, and we, we, we suggested to Mike that we do some different type of lighting on Wood Avenue. And Mike listened. And if you've been down Wood Avenue, at night, it is absolutely gorgeous. Um, I'm constantly receiving phone calls uh, and texts and emails about how nice Wood Avenue looks. Uh, and again, this is just something a little extra that we can do uh, in this time, this pandemic, in this, this just crazy time that we're living in, uh, to try to uplift the spirits and let people know that uh, that there is hope. Um, and um, I'm very thankful for Mike. Let's see what else I have here. Oh, well, you know what? And I, I think I might've forgotten two very important people here, uh, particularly with the Santa operation. I forgot to mention Sandy Jackson 
and Rebecca Titoli uh, for their efforts. Um, and forgive me if I've forgotten anybody else, uh, because it takes a it takes a team to put these type of um, events together. Yeah. And um, Rebecca and Sandy uh, Jackson are certainly key members on this team to make these things these events go off smoothly and without a hitch. Uh, again, we talked about the snow, impending snowstorm. Uh, I received some correspondence this evening, uh, both from the, uh, the high school and from uh, the superintendent of schools, and they asked me to please communicate these. So I'm going to just take a few seconds and read these two correspondence. Um, the first one is from uh, Elena Horry from the Linden High School, and she says, Dear Linden High School families, with the impending storm, I wanted to reach out and offer some guidance and support as there is certainly the potential for power outages and connection issues. First and foremost, I hope you and your family are healthy and well. Given everything that 2020 has dumped on us, it seems inevitable that, it'd be, that, that it would end with a huge storm. Please stay safe and begin to prepare now. Charge your phones, your tablets, MBAs, power backups, and other mobile devices. Make sure you have food and medicine you need in case we're snowed in for a day or two. Naturally, if you use power, contact PSENG or call 911 if there's an emergency. Students, please understand that your teachers may live outside of Linden and may be dealing with connection issues or power outages of their own. If you attempt to sign into a class and your teacher is not available, assume this is the case. Check Canvas for assigned work. If you have lost power in your home, please do not stress. Email your teacher and Ms. Conrad at the attendance office when you're able. Finally, take a little time to enjoy the snow. Have some hot chocolate, build a snowman, whatever helps you to unwind and be a kid for an hour or two. 2020 has brought a lot of stress. Don't forget to find the joy. Wishing you a safe and happy snow day, Mrs. Horry. Uh, I have another correspondence from Dr. Marley, Marnie Hazelton. It reads, dear parents and guardians, guardians Although we're expecting a snowstorm Wednesday into Thursday, all of our schools will still be operating under our virtual learning model throughout this week. If a student loses power and cannot attend virtual class, a parent or guardian should notify the teacher or principal of, of the problem as soon as power is restored. Don't worry, no one will be marked absent or penalized because of the power issue. Teachers have been directed to notify their principal or supervisor if they lose power. If the teacher is not in their WebEx room, assume they're without power. Work will, work will still be available to students on, a C, on Seesaw or Canvas learning platform. Grab and go meals will not be available on Thursday. Students will be able to get food on Wednesday to, to, to last through Thursday. Grab and go meals are available 12.30 to 3 p.m. daily at each school and distribution will resume Friday. Please monitor our district website, www.linden.k12.nj.us and social media accounts for any updates. Everyone, please stay safe and take some time to get outside and enjoy our first snowstorm of the season. And that's uh, signed by Dr. Marnie Hazelton, the superintendent of schools. Now, I have some additional information here as regarding um, uh, the um, residents of the of West 15th Street. Um, there apparently was a glitch uh, in the announcement uh, regarding the establishment of a one-way street. Um, so I'm going to read the letter that was sent to me by Lieutenant Gunther. Uh, and this affects uh, Councilman Ralph Strano. Uh, uh, I'm not sure if Councilman Strano has the correspondence. Uh, if he would like, he, he more than, I would allow him to read it or I'll even let the chief read it. Uh, if not, I'll just continue with it with my report to keep it as part of my report. Okay. Um, anyway, it, it says attention residents of West 15th Street. Last month, the city council adopted municipal ordinance number 6455, which converted West 15th Street into a one way street between South Wood Avenue and South Style Street. Recently, these changes were implemented, and we learned that the ordinance improperly indicated that traffic would flow east towards South Wood Avenue. This change is meant to complement planned changes to traffic exiting Aviation Plaza, and we believe that the current traffic pattern will lead to increased traffic on West 15th Street when those changes are implemented. 
Therefore, we're working as quickly as possible to have the ordinance corrected and have traffic flow west towards Style Street as intended. Please continue to follow the signs as posted until this error can be corrected. We apologize for any inconvenience this may have caused. Please feel free to contact the Traffic Bureau at 908-474-8505 should you have any questions or concerns, or you can count you can contact your councilman who is um, Councilman Ralph Strano, and his number is 908-514-8505. I got that right. Yeah, pretty good. We have to memorize the numbers. That's pretty good. Um, and continuing on, I have a, a report from the Department of Transportation. I just want to inform the residents of Linden that the, the Linden received the amount of four hundred twenty thousand um, dollars from in front from the Department of Transportation, and that's an increase from last year, and that's for um, road improvements. So um, very happy with that news. Okay, also uh, from the state of New Jersey, Department of, Envir of Environmental Protection. Um, the New, New Jersey Department of Environmental Protection is developing an illegal dumping program, um, collaboration and deterrence program to deter illegal dumping and empower cities to take an active role in combating illegal dumping. The project will take place over 10 months and include collaborating and training from the department's compliance and enforcement program and community collaborative initiative and the Attorney General's Division of Criminal Justice and Division of Law. So basically, what's going to happen is they're going to be loaning cameras to selected uh, towns. Uh, the cameras will be used to deter illegal dumping uh, and enforce illegal dumping regulations and ordinances. Um, so basically, they're going to loan these cameras. It won't cost the city any money, and they're going to loan uh, cameras to various municipalities who are being affected by illegal dumping and the city of Linden has applied to be a part of that program. Moving right along. And I'm almost Mayor, do you have much up. more? Because I know you've had a lengthy report this evening. Yes, I'm almost done, Council President. Okay, I know you've had a lot with the snowstorm. Thank you. Yes, we're, we're, we're moving right along here. And I'm going to say... I'm going to wrap up with two final things here. First of all, I would like to thank, well, for, for, I received a call about a week ago uh, from a young lady who has a child with a neuro, neurological uh, disorder um, and her car had been hit during the evening. It was a hit and run and her bumper was hanging down uh, which, and the car was undrivable. And so she called me up and she said that she's out of work. She can't afford to call an Uber uh, to go take her, 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 her child to the doctor. So she asks, is there any money available? Do we have any kind of programs available that could, to assist in fixing the car? Um, and realizing that bumpers could be pretty expensive. I, I said, you know, we really don't have any kind of programs like that. I said, but we do have a councilman like that. And his name is Ralph Strano. And so I called Ralph and explained the situation. And in the cold, Councilman Strano took from his busy day and went up and reattached her bumper so the car would be drivable again. Now, Ralph, many of you don't know, Ralph was a body and fender man years ago, okay? And, uh, and I just wanna thank him personally for, doing, do, for, for, for extending his help and his services uh, for, some, for a person he didn't even know who had no money to, to offer any compensation. Uh, he just heard the story and without question went out and helped. Uh, and I thank him for doing that uh, because um, I do know this young lady. I know her mother and I know her grandmother and they are in a financial situation like many others are in this town. And uh, Ralph, you know, again, I wanna thank you from the bottom of my heart. You are truly um, a decent human being and um, you, 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 you exemplify 
um, what what uh, elected officials should be like and just decent human beings should be like. So again, I'll, I'll thank you. And last but not least, we talked about the budget last night. Okay, we talked about um, not raising taxes and maybe we got a little edgy, maybe I got a little, little edgy, and, um, but I happened to run across a quote. Um, it was, and it came from a book called The Leadership Secrets of Colin Powell. Um, and one of the quotes says, being responsible sometimes means pissing people off. Uh, and he basically said, you're going to get angry. So you're going to, you're going to get people angry when you do what a leader needs to do. So I'm saying this, that as elected officials, if we have to review an employee, use the time to be honest and be constructive in your criticism and don't hold back. To do so is cheating the employee and the organization. We may have long-standing relationships but employees need to know that our ultimate concern as elected officials is with their performance and the success of our city. So let's try to remember that. And I wanna wish everybody a happy and healthy, a happy holiday season and a healthy and prosperous new year. Uh, let us pray that 2021 will be better than 2020. Let us pray that the God who has entrusted us with the lives and welfare of people will continue to give us guidance and will continue to give us the foresight to conquer anything that may be front that may come in front of us, whether it's COVID-19 or COVID anything. Let's continue uh, to be the leaders who can defeat such things. God bless you all. And again, have a healthy and happy holiday. That concludes my report, Mr. President. Thank you, uh, Mayor Armstead. Okay, we're gonna move on to resolutions. Okay, we have resolutions number uh, 202340 through 202365. Okay, can I have a motion? on these resolutions, please. Yes, Council President, I make a motion that, uh, these, res that these resolutions be accepted. Uh, that is resolution. Second. Yeah, 2340. I, I hadn't even seconded yet, Council, uh, Council Lady, but I appreciate your seconding. Thank you. And ask for a second. Okay, we have a <laughs> second. Okay. I did the second according to the um the thing. That's what I was doing. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, discussion. Okay. So we have a roll call, please. Uh, Council President, is this where we're we're pulling resolutions to discuss? As members of the, yes. I'm gonna pull a few. If you, if you. Uh, okay, I'm gonna remind everyone. We have three minutes for the council member um, on resolution. So please, I know the mayor was quite lengthy tonight on his report, but we had a lot of information that needed to had to go out uh, regarding the snowstorm. Okay. Um, so again, I'm gonna ask council to please, you know. Time. I mean, you implemented these rules, the council did, but don't follow them for, I mean, if when I want to speak about resolutions of us spending our tax. We have three minutes, councilman. Go ahead, uh, please. You want to stop me, but then the mayor could talk for 35 minutes. It's, 
we're not playing on the same set of rules here. Resolution. As I had mentioned, there is an impending snowstorm. The mayor had a lot of information I had to go out from the school system. Okay, so that's why I allotted him extra time this evening. Again, I'm going to ask the council to council I gave several of you extra minutes on your reports also. You don't have an easy job, Council President. I'm not mad at you with this. So I'm asking you to please be mindful. That's all I'm asking, sir. All right. I'm going to try to be mindful on that. Um, resolution authorizing the of Number. Nuno's. That's 349. I'd like to know if uh, Mr. Nuno has approach the city and selling or not. I would like to know why the resolution of um, 351, why Brian Fritzke has been on the zoning board for as long as I was on it and years and years and before that, would like to know why he's resigning now. A resolution accepting the resolu resignation of John Goncalves, DDC. This is the gentleman that ran against me. He was appointed probably about a week before uh, ran against me and now he's resigning. I just want to know what the reason he gave for that. And I'd also like to know if he ever went to a meeting. Uh, resolution rescinding resolution 2091, appointing Gonzalez as alternate to the zoning board of adjustments. So we're basically rescinding his appointment. I'd like to know why we're doing that. Which number was that? Um, Which number was that? That was 353. Okay. And we are accepting the resignation of Frank Delith Mia uh, to the planning board. A huge amount of um, resignations on these relative boards, just trying to figure out why. And specifically as to why. Thank you, Council President. I think that is all. Thank you. Hold on one second. 351, 352, and 353. I'll send them the emails. Okay, Mr. Bodek said he will provide you with the emails from the people regarding these resignations. Okay. Councilman Roman. Thank you, Council President. Okay, and uh, on 349 uh, regarding Nuno's, Mayor Armstead. Yes, yeah, this is just a. Um... We're sending this to the planning board to investigate whether the property commonly known as, as, as we'll call it Nuno's, uh, should be des designated as an area in need of redevelopment. Um, uh, and, and your answer to the, does, is Mr. Nuno in favor of this? Uh, absolutely. Thank you, ma'am. Appreciate that, sir. Okay. Thank you. Councilman Roman, like I said, I apologize. The mayor had extra time tonight, but I was just trying to make sure information got out to the residents. Was he long-winded? Yes, and I will speak to him after the meeting. You don't, you don't need to speak with him, Council President. I will. I will. You be in your position, so. Yes, thank you. 50, 50 lashes with a wet noodle. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right, man. Well, how about a snowball fight tomorrow? That sounds good. Okay, Councilwoman Cosby. Councilwoman Cosby. I had to take myself off of um, mute. Okay. They made me forget what I was going to say. We're doing discussion on the resolution, but I already spoke about my neighbor's resolution, but I wanted to say, um, I forget it. I lost my train of thought, but I do have um, the same concern that Councilman Roman had on 349. And so everything shouldn't really, in my opinion, be designated, you know, sent to the planning board because we know that the planning board is appointed, it's appointed people and so on and so forth. But um, if the guy wants to sell, let him sell. Let's not do, you know, some kind of sneaky trick to take the property and force the buyer to give him whatever he wants for the property. I don't know what's going on here. And keep the neighborhood the way it is. I don't know in need of re improvement. What else could we have there, for God's sake? It's, a, it's you know, 
it's a banquet center essentially and in a pub but um when you talk about the, the appointments and all like that i want to just state for the record that we should revisit the salaries of some of these commissions i know it was a big thing but i don't know if it was so much of the position or the person and now that you know there's a resignation we should revisit why you know a secretary of a certain board was making a salary more than the members of the city council that's all so you know when it comes to that and what really are they you know their duties and stuff but i know they're autonomous but i just want to for the record say we should really revisit that because some people do work more than others and others just get high salaries for whatever reasons thank you councilman well, and we'll take that under uh consideration mr antonelli you have your hand up yes uh thank you council president just briefly with regard to that resolution uh 2020-349 that is a referral uh, that's uh, referring uh, the property to be studied as a non-condemnation referral. So um, I see Councilwoman Cosby shaking her head. Unless the resolution I am reading is incorrect, non-condemnation. Uh, so um, to the extent that uh, obviously the city is not seeking to use its powers of eminent domain, uh, with regard to the these properties in that resolution. Okay, thank you, Mr. Antonelli. Mayor Armstead, you have your hand up. Yeah, yes, I, I just want to reiterate the uh, same thing that uh, the uh, our city attorney did. It's a non-condemnation, and typically, when you have non-condemnation, uh, you have usually it, it, it's the owner who's coming to you uh, with some sort of uh, desire to uh, have the property developed. Uh, and uh, just for the record, um, Mr. Nuno had come to us a couple years ago uh, uh, thinking about developing his property. Um, and at the time, um, the conditions weren't maybe as good as they are right now or they weren't as bad as they are right now. And I think with COVID and everything else, uh, it has affected his property in, in, in a negative way. And uh, he, he feels like it's, it may be time for him to do something different other than just... Um, uh, be, be in the um, hall rental or, or bar business. So um, we have um, granted him, you know, we, we told him we, we would we would have us, we'd have this information forwarded to our planning board uh, and, and we would proceed from there. But again, it's non-condemnation. And that means that the property owner uh, is, is interested in, 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 in having this property developed in a different way. Okay, thank you, Mayor. Um, from the LEDC, Alex La Spinoza. Uh, yes, just to follow up with uh, Dan and the mayor, uh, as they mentioned, this is the first step of the process. Of course, uh, the study would have to go to the planning board. And then, of course, a redevelopment plan would be drawn up. And the redevelopment plan is basically going to entail you what in, entail what would be permissible at this property and you as the council would have to approve the redevelopment plan. So uh, just to kind of reiterate, you know, you guys would have to vote on the redevelopment plan. So I just want to make sure you're all clear on that. And again, the redevelopment plan is going to outline what is per permissible at this property. And then along with that, I did speak to the owner of the property. And obviously COVID-19 has been very hard for several uh, business owners in town. And uh, he, he definitely supports this resolution and, uh, he has interest to uh, to do something with this property. Okay, thank you, Mr. Laspinoza. Councilwoman Caldwell. With this redevelopment plan, is it a possibility that the school district can buy it to build another school? Is that is that something that's an option on the on the table? Because uh, our our school district is. Um, you know, um, there's a lot of kids. I mean, not right now because it's virtual or whatever. Um, but from my experience with my kids in the classrooms, you, you know, we could use another school. So I'm just putting it out there. Okay. Mr. Antonelli. Yeah, thank you, Council President. Uh, Councilwoman, to answer your question, again, we can't force the property owner to sell to anybody. Uh, but certainly if the property owner uh, uh, is able to negotiate a, 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 a sale to the Board of Ed, that's certainly something they can do without the city's involvement. 
Okay, thank you, Mr. Antonelli. Councilwoman Cosby? Yes, that was the question I had for um, Mr. Antonelli. Now I was ranting with my mute of, on purpose, but I remember clearly that the um, referral to the zoning board, planning board, planning board for the wood check property initially said non-condemnation. That's what it said in the beginning. So my question here is, if, if this guy owns his property, why do we need to get involved? If he wants to change what he's doing there, then he needs to go through and send a letter to the planet. But why do we need to do this resolution if he has an interest in changing the per repurposing his property? Why do we need to go through this, this process? Because we're not in the, in the redevelopment business. It's privately owned. It's if he law. wants to change it's shady. my it's question. The law. It's the law. Mayor, it is not because councilwoman mayor please mute thank you yeah when when some over oh, for example when we had the um redevelopment starting and by the way nobody included the fifth ward councilwoman on the, the meetings with roselle um which it borders my ward so please consider including me next time but when people change the purpose of their property why I think we lost Councilwoman Cosby. I don't know if she could hear Mr. Antonelli. Yeah, thank, you. thank you, Council President. I mean, I'll try and do my best to try and answer the Councilwoman. So uh, a couple things uh, are, uh, that are worth pointing out. Um, as to the Clark property, that, that, that referral, the resolution was done with uh, a referral for for condemnation. Um, so the law changed a few years back when, when governing bodies make these referrals to the planning board to determine whether uh, a property or, or, or uh, several properties are uh, uh, qualified for an, a designation of an area in need of redevelopment. Um, we're required now to say if that's with condemnation or non-condemnation. So the Clark property did have the condemnation language in the resolution. Uh, this one obviously is without. But um, your question though was why can't the property owner just do something on their own uh, without having to, I guess, go through this process uh, with the city. Um, there's some benefits, uh, as, as I've said before, that come uh, as a result of a, a, a redevelopment plan, a redevelopment agreement, there's certain things that you can do under the law. And again, these are, these are tools for the governing body to use uh, for uh, its advantage uh, in this process. Uh, there may also be some other properties involved, not just the property owner, uh, not just Nuno's, for example. Uh, sometimes as you know, sometimes referrals are made again with additional properties that may be um, uh, sought to be brought into the area and does, uh, area need a redevelopment. So it really, again, it, these are tools that the municipality has in its efforts to redevelop property. Um, and so that's why this process happens. Can't happen uh, every time, but uh, certainly there, there, there are reasons and perhaps um, here, Perhaps its proximity to the to train station may be some relevance. I don't know, but again, it's just the referral as far as the designation. If it comes back that it is an area in need of redevelopment, then obviously the process would start there as to what would be appropriate from a zoning perspective through Paul Ritchie, uh, our planner. Councilwoman uh, Cosby, I know you're froze. Did that answer your question? It did not, <clears throat> um, but I can take it offline. My, my issue seriously is if he wants to redevelop his, because the, the, the attorney didn't give me what benefits it had for us. Basically, it just made more work for the zoning board. We also have a master plan that currently exists and is under construction if it hasn't been published, because I don't know, um, I'm out the loop on that one. So the permissible uses for that property are already
That must be her internet connection. Okay, I'm going to move on. Uh, Councilwoman, you're frozen again. I think you're having issues with your internet connection there. Okay. Councilwoman, I'm sure Mr. Antonelli will answer any questions if you have if you reach out to him. I know you're having problems with your internet. I think we just lost her too. All right. We're gonna move on to Councilwoman Caldwell. I thought I put my hand down. Okay, thank you, Councilwoman. All right. Mayor. Yes, I just wanted to, to, to say that, you know, that particular area is zoned uh, in an area which we could refer to as a rock zone, is residential or commercial. Uh, so which means that um, you can have a number of different type of things go there. You can have a residential with commercial below, or you can develop a, 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 a new commercial establishment. Uh, in any event, you know, again, uh, it was, it's certainly up to the uh, owner of the property. Uh, he, he certainly indicated that he would like to uh, see his property utilized in a different way. And uh, he is certainly within the uh, within within his realm uh, to, to do so. Uh, that's it. Thank you. Matt. Okay, we had a motion and a second on the floor. Can we have a roll call, please? Councilwoman Orman. Yes. Javik. Yes. Caldwell. Yes. Mohammed. Yes. Cosby. Roman. Yes. Strano. Yes. Medina. Yes. Icky. Yes. Mrs. Yamakaitis. Yes. Uh, let me see. Let me check. Okay, if we could, uh, 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 Councilwoman Cosby is coming back in. All right, to the meeting, please note, Mr. Bodak. I think I got kicked out. Did I miss the vote on the resolutions? Yes. Well, well, well I mean. the roll call. Council, okay. Councilwoman Cosby, Mr. Bodak is going to register your vote now. I appreciate that. I'm still, I don't know what's happening. I've been sitting still, but so for the resolutions, I would like to abstain on number 342. And number 359, I'm going to vote no to 348 and 349 and yes to the rest. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, we're moving on to ordinances on first reading. Okay, uh, we're going to start with uh, ordinance 6459. An ordinance approving the application of a long-term tax exemption and authorizing the execution of a financial agreement with the apartments at Linden Station Urban Renewal LLC. Okay, can we have a motion on ordinance uh, 6459, please? Yes, Council <coughs> President, I'd like to make a motion to introduce ordinance 6459 and ask for a second, please. Second. Mrs. Orman? Yes. Javik? Yes. Caldwell? Yes. Mohammed? Yes. Cosby? No. Roman? Same. Strano? Yes. Medina? Yes. Councilman Medina? Yes. Hickey? No. Mrs. Yamakaitis? Yes. Ordinance 6460. Bond ordinance providing an appropriation of $288,200 for the acquisition and installation of a video surveillance system for the Fourth Ward Park and authorizing the issuance of $273,790 in bonds or notes of the city for financing part of the appropriation. Okay, can we have a motion to introduce Ordinance 6460? Hey, can we have a motion? Yes, yes, yes. Council President, I offer a motion 
64-59 and add for a second. 60, 60 sir. 64-60. 64-60, I'm sorry. Okay. Second. Mrs. Ormond? Yes. Javik? Yes. Caldwell? Yes. Mohammed? Yes. Cosby? Yes. Roman? Yes. Strano? Yes. Medina? Yes. Hickey? Yes. Mrs. Yamakaitis? Yes. Okay, ordinance 6461. An ordinance to amend and supplement chapter seven traffic of an ordinance entitled an ordinance adopting and enacting the revised general ordinances of the city of Linden, 1999. Passed November 23rd, 1999 and approved November 24th, 1999 and as amended and supplemented. Be it ordained by the council of the city of Linden <coughs> that section one, chapter seven traffic section 7-14 parking prohibited during certain hours on certain streets shall be in the same as hereby amended as follows. Add Gessner Street, South Side, Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. between Wood Avenue and Ains to Ainsworth Street. Okay, Councilwoman Ormond, can we have a motion for introduction, please? Council President, I'd like to make a motion to introduce ordinance number 6461 and ask for a second, please. Second. Mrs. Ormond? Yes. Javik? Councilman Javik? Yes. Caldwell? Yes. Mohammed? Yes. Cosby? Yes. Roman? Yes. Strano? Yes. Medina? Yes. Hickey? Yes. Mrs. Yamakaitis? Yes. Okay, we're going to move on to the public comments portion of the meeting. <coughs> Again, we ask. Um, no personal, political, or derogatory comments, not to exceed three minutes. Members of the public who may be attending are on mute until the public comment portion of the meeting. If you wish to be recognized, please use the raised hand icon in the program to identify yourself. You will then give your name and address as at any council meeting. Failure to do so will result in your being muted and not recognized further. If you are registered more than once, you will only be recognized to speak one time under your first registration as at any council meeting. When public comment is open, the ability to register will be closed. Again, please use the raised hand icon, icon in the program. Okay, I have first Ed Kaminsky. Please state your name and address for the record. Ed Kaminsky, Maple Avenue. Uh, happy holiday season all, and thank you. Um, thank you. Uh, 6459, the ordinance that was just uh, passed for introduction. What property is that? Is that the quick check property? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yes. Okay. So, uh, and Ms. Ms. Uh, uh, Councilman Hurling, I'll politely disagree with you. We are evidently in the real estate business. We don't do it really well. We've done, but we've been in it for 20 some odd years. We've gotten our butts kicked in court and we're still paying lawsuits and, and, and paying the price for quite some time. I wish we weren't to your point, but we are. And in this case with this, I don't know why we're pursuing it. Um, or new knows your questions were spot on. I don't understand why we need to go this direction if he wants to do something with his property. But at the end of the day, the, the owners of this property, the, the woods, the woods, one of the foundational families of Linden said they do not want to sell. So I don't know why the council is insisting on moving on here. We, 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 we've gotten our butt kicked in that neighborhood already. It's going to happen again, unless uh, there's something else going on. And that's definitely possible. Now, I don't, again, I don't, I'm not in the know, uh, but I do ask questions and I talk to all sides. That being said, I don't understand. I try to be very, um, uh, 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 measured during this time of COVID, but now we're nine months into this. I don't know why the city isn't doing more for its merchants to keep the businesses going. Um, we look what just the surrounding towns are. We're doing nothing. As a matter of fact, I've talked to business owners and they're, they actually said that they're fighting 
uh, with the city to, to basically to, to stay afloat. And I don't understand why that is. We have nothing. There's other towns that have put aside streets for their restaurants to survive. We have zero. So that is very disappointing. That is extremely disappointing. That's jobs and that's lives. Um, in terms also in uh, staying uh, uh, you know, on these themes of real estate and COVID, uh, I can appreciate working together um, with Roselle um, you know, in co cooperation. We should have a singular focus right now, and that's keeping Linden on the straight and narrow and doing what we can to support our businesses, not spending any time with Roselle. We should be singularly focused, and that's our problem. We get distracted on, the, on all these other things, and I don't understand why. Again, there may be reasons, but uh, the results speak for themselves, unfortunately. In terms of parking, again, we should got to think out of the box. Um, just up the block from me, we have St. Elizabeth's. In other areas, we have largely unused, and unused parking lots. Why don't we, as a city, approach these organizations, maybe to share some kind of revenue with them, um, or at the very least, to, to use their, to see if there's any possibility to use their lots. You have the Meridia property, the old uh, uh, one firehouse there, a ton of unused spots in the back, the Verizon building right next door, probably about another 20 spots in the back there unused that we could leverage to really alleviate some of these uh, uh, issues. So that being said, um, as a governing body, please consider what you're doing. Uh, economic development, I'm all for it. Uh, that doesn't mean um, real estate development. None of us here are real estate experts, at least on the city side, um, and we don't do it well. We have a long track record showing that. We should be putting parties together. I'm all for that, that may be interested in doing business together, and then our, our, our role should be out of it beyond the obvious zoning and, and the other stuff. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kaminsky. Okay, um, next we have somebody registered as Y-E-S-S-S. -S -S. Please state your name and address for the record. You need to unmute yourself. Okay, um, I'm calling on whoever's, okay, they lowered their hand. Okay, Joseph Birch, please state your Address for the record, sir. Sorry. Oh, can you hear me? Yes, we can. All right, I'm sorry. Uh, Joseph Birch, uh, President, Linden Police Superior Officers Association, 625 Beachwood Road, Linden, New Jersey. Uh, just like to take this time to thank Sergeant Anthony Lordi for his service to the Linden Police Department and to the citizens of Linden. Sergeant Lordi's retirement serves as a constant reminder of the dangers of the job that Linden police officers face on a daily basis. And although we're sorry to see him go, we're happy to know that he is happy with the closure that this retirement brings. Thank you, thank you, thank you to the Linden City Council and Mayor Armstead for continuing to recognize the importance of proper supervision within the Linden Police Department and for approving the promotion of FTO Matthew Wisnowski to the rank of Sergeant. FTO Wisnowski is a second generation first responder in the city of Linden and is also a United States Marine, who I'm sure will perform all of his duties as Sergeant with an honor, integrity, and distinction. Uh, next, I'm hopeful that my next thank you to Alexis and everyone up in our office, especially Teresa and Tanya is not premature, but I would like to thank them for all of their hard work, especially over the past few weeks. And I look just as much forward to not having to send any more emails in regards to what I spoke about at our last council meeting, as much as I'm sure you're looking forward to not having to read them. Uh, congratulations to our brothers from the fire department, Mike Bertol, Greg Ronsky, and Chris Rooney on their promotions. I'd also like to uh, let everyone know at the Linden Fire Department that our hearts are also heavy due to the recent loss of Garrett Rudnicki. Uh, I personally am proud to have uh, had his friendship uh, over the past 35 plus years. Um, happy Hanukkah, Merry Christmas, Happy Kwanzaa, Happy and Healthy New Year. And I don't know about you, but I'm praying for rain, uh, not snow in the next few days. But no matter what happens, I know that those rock stars over at DPW fear no snow and that we're all in good hands. Um, thank you. Have a good night. Oh, P.S. Call me, Alan. Goodbye. Council President. Councilman Roman. Thank you, Council President. Just on behalf of Council and everyone here in the city of London, I just want to give a shout out to uh, Joe Birch's wife, 
Tracy, who had her last uh, board of education meeting tonight as a council, as commissioner on the board of education. She's done a good job. So thank you. Thank Joan. you. Okay, our next caller is Hans Herberg. Please state your address for the record. Hello, uh, can anybody hear me? Yes. Um, okay, uh, Hans Herberg, 51 Westover Road. Uh, thank you guys for allowing me to be on. I I've been away for months due to medical, but I'm glad to assist though. Um, I do hope everyone has a safe and you know happy holidays. And also too, I mean, hope we don't have a bad storm though and everything like that, but I'm very concerned. I mean, I think what we need to focus on, I know this year has been a rough year for not just Linden, but the world and United States. So I think we gotta do focus, like taking care of each other, help each other, respectful and supporting, you know, a lot of small business leaders has been hurt as well too. So, I mean, I think we need to focus on helping each other out and, you know, being kind to another and even, you know, encourage a lot of residents, like help support small business leaders. You know, because a lot of them are working hard and put food on their table for their families and everything like that. And I wasn't aware about, I remember the discussions, the one by, um, I think it was Quick Check, but I do pray and hope the matter gets resolved, though. I mean, I think it's best to do what's best interest for the community, though. Um, you know, with a lot of projects and support small business leaders and owners out there, because, you know, the real thing in this country and the community are the hardworking small business owners, they help make a difference and support, you know, the economy for, you know, our community. So I do thank you guys for your time though. I appreciate it. Thank you, Hans. Okay. Okay, can, um, can we have a motion to close the public uh, portion of the meeting? Council President, I make a motion to close the public portion of the meeting and ask for a second, please. Second. Second. Another member of the public with their hand up. As at any council meeting, Councilman, they're supposed to, uh, when we ask them to sign in, to raise their hands, it's supposed to be at that time. I'm not playing uh, childish games here with people. Oh, wow. Hey, can we have a roll call? Mrs. Orman? Yes. Javik? Yes. Caldwell? Yes. Mohammed? Yes. Cosby? Yes. Roman? No. No. Strano? Yes. Medina? Yes. Hickey? No. Mrs. Yamakaitis? Yes. Okay, comments from members of the governing body. Please use your raised hand icon. Okay. Councilwoman Cosby. Yes. I wanted to just touch on something that the mayor said, which is near and dear to my heart, actually. Um, some of the council members who currently uh, sit on the personnel committee may not be aware, but I, I did sit on the committee for a number of years and we were very successful. It was my recommendation that we did training, not just training for the job function, but we did soft skills training. We encouraged training um, for customer service. We did safety training. We did all of that. We also instituted or tried to, for I think two years we did, we did evaluation, right, for the department head. It was not well received. And I said then what the mayor said this evening, when you have a job to do, you run the way you know we expect it to as a business. So with that being said, I will volunteer yet again to serve on the personnel committee. One, because I have been in personnel as a, as a job in the past. Not only that, I'm passionate about our city and I wanna make sure that the employees get what they deserve and so do the customers. And also to something that was said before, let the council get what we are entitled to as well in regards to responses and things getting done for our community. According to our policy, 
I would love to see us go back to evaluating all of the department heads for the accountability, which is something I've been saying for the past 12 years. And that's all my comments. Thank you, Councilwoman. Okay, Councilwoman Hickey. Thank you, Council President. Uh, first and foremost, um, I would like to um, just wish the best to many who uh, retired um, this year. Um, Albert, Al Citroni, Anthony Lordi, Larry Kalesa, Albert Martin, and Frank Pichitti. Thank you for the time and the service that you've given to the city of Linden unconditionally. Um, to the promotions tonight, I know we are in good hands with all of our fire promotions. And I look forward to working with you and you continually, continuously serving our city. I want to let Mr. Bodek know that I have talked to Representative PSE and G. Uh, if he would kindly and all the council members get any issues that you've had with poles and lights, I would be happy to forward it to them so we can get these issues resolved in a very timely manner. Hopefully, uh, our storm won't be too bad this week, uh, wind gusts, that they can start working on everything next week. Uh, additionally, uh, real quick, I just want to let you know, I might need another extra couple of seconds, Council President, that I also am concerned with all of the um, resignations to our planning board, our zoning board, and our LEDC. Just doesn't seem right. It, it, this never happens. Um, whether it's the truth that we receive in an email or not, I, I just I don't agree with it. But I I think something funny is going on. But if there is anybody interested in these boards, uh, please uh, send in uh, a form and and sign up for them. We need good people on our committees uh, that are truthful and honest and willing to do a good job for our city. And please just be considerate during the snowstorm. Don't park across the street in front of your neighbor's house. Try to fill your cars in your driveway. Um, I, I have a lot of faith in, in our city workers. We just need your help in doing it. Especially to all our first responders and Chief Hart, um, Chief Hasco, you've had your hands full lately. And I truly, truly appreciate all the things that uh, you had to endure during this past year, especially Chief Hart. Um, I'm the biggest fan of all our first responders and supporters. And today I pray for all of you and your safety. Um, happy holidays to everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman. Councilman Javik. Yes, Council President, I just wanna congratulate everyone on their promotions and the best of luck on all our retirees. Happy holidays. Thank you, Councilman. Councilman Roman. Thank you, Council President, just as a final note um, to add on to the good luck and uh, Godspeed to the retirees and, and congratulations to all our promotions. Uh, in regards to PSENG, I've had some issues. We discussed this in caucus. Uh, Councilwoman Hickey, I will be uh, around the board in the snowstorm and I will be taking note of all those lights. I will <laughs> give you a, a very detailed report um and on top of that uh, in the sixth ward we're very busy normally please take care of your neighbors um and if you need me i'll be out there during the snowstorm we're looking at 12 inches right now in london so take care everyone happy holidays and thank you council president thank you councilman councilman medina yes thank you council president just give me one second i just want to make sure this video i think it's going to be to get back on here uh, just felt to mention three things, um, Council President. The first, I um, want to just put out there that uh, I have reached out to the mayor's office and also spoken to my colleague, uh, Councilwoman Ormond, in reference to some concerns that are shared between the first and ninth ward. Uh, we're hoping to uh, meet, hopefully, before the holidays, holidays or after the holidays uh, to discuss those concerns in our communities. Uh, second, um, I'm drawing a blank, so I apologize. <laughs> Second, I forgot to actually give, you know, just remind folks that um, if you need me, you can always call me 908-986-6100 or email me at amedina at lyndon-nj.org. And also, you can also text me as well. Uh, 
I know I had a third one, but I just can't remember right now. I just drew a blank, but I just want to want to be safe um, during the storm. And again, I'm always available and uh, just be cognizant and be courteous with um, your neighbors. Thank you. That concludes it. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Member with their hands up. That's it. Okay. I too would just like to take this opportunity to wish everyone a happy Hanukkah, Merry Christmas, happy Kwanzaa. I want to thank um, the, all the council members for their patience tonight. I tried to give you guys a little, little extra time in the end. I know the mayor was very lengthy tonight. Uh, we had a lot of information that we needed to uh, get out to the public. So again, I thank the council members for all their patience as well as the public. I want to wish all of you again happy holidays <laughs> and during the storm if anyone um, needs my assistance in any way citywide my telephone number is 908-494-0880 I'll be willing to assist you in any which way I can okay um, the following council meetings will be as follows council conference meeting prior to the council meeting Tuesday December 29th at 6 p.m. in the Council Conference Room, City Hall. Um, the meeting will be held virtually. Council meeting Tuesday, December 29th at 7 p.m. in the Council Chambers, City Hall. Again, the meeting will be held virtually. The reorganization meeting of the City Council will be as follows. Council Conference meeting prior to the Council meeting, Tuesday, January 5th, 2021 at 6 p.m. in the Council uh, Conference Room, 301 Northwood Avenue. That meeting also will be held virtually. Council meeting Tuesday, January 5th at 7 p.m. Uh, that meeting also will be held virtually. Please check the city website, linden-nj.org for directions on how to participate elect uh, electronically in these meetings and for copies of the agendas. Can I have a motion to adjourn the meeting? Motion to adjourn the meeting. Second. Okay. Mrs. Ormond? Yes. Javik? Javik? Yes. Caldwell? Yes. Mohammed? Yes. Cosby? Yes. Roman? Aye. Strano? Yes. Blaine? Uh, Medina? Yes. Yes. Vicky. This is Yes. Yes. <laughs>